how do you make a natural deodorant? Today I'm going to show you my recipe. G'day there, I'm Dana from Pewakaka Valley Homestead. About two or three years ago, I stopped using normal deodorant and started using some homemade stuff. And honestly, I did it over a holiday period and I thought I'll give it a go um, and it doesn't matter too much to my family if I smell bad. But actually what I found was after a couple of weeks of using it, that funny smell that you get if you don't use commercial deodorant went away and suddenly you don't stink so bad anymore. Um, so I have actually started using this homemade deodorant. I have used it for years now and I find it really, really good. I have got a blog post with about three different recipes in it that I'll put a link to down below. Um, this is the stick deodorant. I prefer it. Originally I started with the um, deodorant that's the first on the list and it's basically the same recipe with a little more beeswax in it so it sits as a stick. Now some people react to the baking soda that's in it and I actually use half the amount of baking soda that's in it because I was finding that I was reacting. Um, after about six months of using it, the recipe as it is I found I started to get a bit of a rash. Uh, so I now use about half the amount of baking soda that's in it. You can use no baking soda. Whichever you take out, you just replace that exact same amount again with some tapioca starch. Um, to pour it into the stick deodorants, we use these handy dandy little cardboard tubes. You can get plastic tubes as well. These ones have a bottom that push up. I think they're actually often advertised as pencil cases. They're just a little small one, but they're a perfect size for deodorant. I got this from a local soap uh, website. Um, but today I don't have one of those, so I'm actually using a toilet roll with a rubber band around some tin foil, and you'll see that that works just as well. In our current climate where the bathroom is quite cold, um, it's not going to get soft and melt, so it doesn't even matter if the bottom of this is off, but you can put a piece of paper or something over it if you want to. So that's what I'm going to be pouring it into. Other than that, all you really need is the ingredients and a pot and a scale. Uh, the recipe is in both ounces and grams. I'm going to use grams because that's what I'm used to. Um, and you just load the ingredients one at a time into a pot, melt it together, and then pour it into the mould. It's really, really that easy. So let's got to get on with it. Right, the very first thing you want to do is add into here your beeswax and your coconut oil and melt them in together. Now it doesn't matter what sort of beeswax you use, whatever you've got access to, use that. Um, the stuff I have got here are some white beeswax pellets. It doesn't matter if you use yellow or white or whatever, that's just what I've got. Um, if you've got a block of beeswax, just carve off how much you need. You only need 15 grams, which is quite a small amount. It's just about a tablespoonful. And then you also need 30 grams of coconut oil or about two tablespoons full. Oops, Daisy. Preferably not all over the floor. And then I'm just going to melt this over on the element over medium heat until it's melted together. Uh, I do need to make a bit of a disclaimer. Uh, beeswax is flammable. Try not to spill it on an open flame. And try not to get it too hot. Melt it over low heat. And if you're really worried about it, you can do it over a double boiler with water underneath. Because the bottom of the pot's hot, I'm just going to use a bowl to measure everything else. Uh, ordinarily the recipe is 20 grams of tapioca starch. I am going to use 35 because I'm using less of the baking soda. If you don't have tapioca starch, you can replace it out one to one rate um, using arrowroot powder. That works just as well. 
And these scales are really helpful. They just have a reset button, so I can just keep pushing that and keep adding to it. The arrowroot powder or the tapioca starch just helps absorb moisture. And the diatomaceous earth, which is the next thing, you need five grams of that. It helps kill the smell causing bacteria as well as absorbing some of the moisture. Now the baking soda, it's one of the more active ingredients. Uh, it helps kill the bacteria, it helps neutralize a lot of the smells. Um, but it is also quite alkaline and can cause skin reactions to some people. So if that's you, you can just miss it out. So just re-zero, oh, not that button. So I'm going to do 15 grams, but the recipe calls for 30. Um, and mine's quite lumpy, so I'm throwing it through a sieve. So that's all the dry ingredients. And the only other thing which I will add straight into the pot... It's kind of hot. I want to sit something under it. Straight into the pot you want to add about four drops of uh, lavender oil. Lavender is really good. Well for one thing it smells nice and it again is sort of an antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal sort of thing. And four drops of lemon oil or I've got citronella or any other flavor that you kind of like the smell of that goes well. Tea tree oil is another option. Because you'll be applying this straight to your skin, just keep to the four drops of each. Don't go overboard. Give it a good mix. And then all you need to do is add in your powders. You just want to give that a really good mix as well. It should come together kind of like a sloppy clay, really. Once it looks like the grossest frosting you've ever seen, you can tip it into your mould. You might like to use a spatula just to get the last of it out. And you'll find once the powders are added, it sets quite quickly. Um, so it's quite good to get it into the moulds as fast as you can. If it starts setting, that's okay. Just stick it back over the heat to soften it back up. And this is enough recipe for one stick. This toilet roll is ever so slightly larger than, than this cardboard roll. This recipe fits in this cardboard roll pretty much perfectly. I'm just going to use my finger to sort of smooth it out a wee bit. Oh, maybe a spoon. Something that will fit. You kind of want to get any air pockets out as best you can. I 
I want you happy with that. Um, sit it somewhere to set. It'll set over the next hour or two. And once it's set, it's really easy just to sort of squeeze the sides and push it up from the bottom and it'll pop out the top like a normal deodorant stick. We just apply this once a day in the same way you would with normal deodorant. And find it quite effective. Ooh. I hope you found that video really useful. If you have, hit the like button. Consider subscribing to our channel. We bring you videos twice a week on growing and preserving your own food and other homesteading bits and pieces. We'll see you in the next one.